For many of us high schoolers, licensed drivers or not, the day we receive our driver's license will be one of the most thrilling days of our adulthood. We are finally reaching adulthood. We realize that receiving our license is just the beginning of the many freedoms we are about to receive in our transition into the adult world. What we sometimes forget, even as adults, is that with that rush of thrill, we have to recognize the responsibility that we have just been granted. Personally, with an older sister, Sarah, who has only been a licensed driver for one year, it is clear to me that she has already become slightly lenient behind the wheel. From the moment we start the ignition until the moment it is off, we are responsible for other lives beside our own, a feeling we most likely did not experience during our childhood. After much research, I have come to realize that texting while driving is much more disruptive and destructive than many of us presume it to be. Some drivers put themselves in the mindset that there is little chance that they will lose control of the car or read that text message from mom or dad. I'll never get into an accident. I'm still steering the wheel. <coughs> At least twice a week, I find myself begging Sarah not to read her inbox while controlling the car, even when it's not necessarily in motion. Even the amount of time that she, or any of us, is reading her parents' mind to walk the dog the unthinkable can become a reality. Her car could collide with another driver's, jeopardizing more than one person's life. Drivers most likely with loved ones who will mourn their deaths if this unthinkable consequence does occur. But when you divert your attention from the road, the unthinkable becomes thinkable. Texting while driving can be disruptive and destructive. While driving, your attention should be undivided, full focus on the vehicle that you are operating. However, attention can become impaired when a driver engages in any, other activities that occupy their attention, activities such as texting. The dictionary defines the word impaired as functioning poorly or inadequately. Do we want drivers who are operating their vehicle poorly on the road? When attention is divided and full focus not devoted to the wheel, anything can happen. And you, your passengers, and other drivers on the road surrounding you could be wounded, or more tragically, killed. Why do we, knowing that this activity could be potentially fatal, put people's lives in line every day by, risk, by engaging in something that is capable of causing death? Although some believe texting while driving to be difficult to enforce, According to Mr. Mike Browning, a spokesperson for Tennessee's Department of Safety, the ultimate goal is voluntary compliance. Speaking for Tennessee, where texting while driving is banned, he explains that the government is mostly focusing on educating the public about texting while driving, thereby uniting it against it, rather than just focusing on enforcement. Currently, 20 states, in addition to Washington, D.C., have banned texting while driving, while 15 states in Washington, D.C., also have primary enforcement of this issue, meaning that an officer may cite a driver who is taking part in this activity. Moreover, as the number of drivers with cell phones continues and will continue to climb throughout 2010, and see proposals to ban this activity continue to be rejected, it's becoming a matter of life and death in many cases that we ban texting behind the wheel now. Texting on a cellular device behind the wheel should be banned due to its destructive consequences to ensure secure roads in America's future, and because motorists who engage in this activity are as impaired as drunk drivers. To begin, drivers who choose to text on their cell phones while operating their vehicle are more likely to find themselves in a car accident, leading to dangerous and potentially fatal consequences. Specifically, a December 2007 simulator study by Clemson University found that texting while driving causes drivers to leave their lanes 10% more often than an undistracted driver, or a driver not engaging in any activities besides watching the road. While sending a text message, the driver may not even be aware that they're emerging into any of the lanes surrounding them, lanes on which other drivers could be traveling, drivers only to fall victim to your oncoming vehicle. In another study released in 2009 by the Virginia Tech Transportation Institution, it was reported that texting behind the wheel is like a thief, and that it steals 4.6 seconds of your attention, or the amount of time that it takes to travel down a full-size football field, 100 yards, at 55 miles per hour. By the end of those 4.6 seconds, you could have missed the exit off the highway, merged into surrounding lanes, or a life could have been claimed. 
After examining the behavior of truck drivers covering more than 6 million miles of road, this same study showed people who send text messages while driving are 23 times more likely to be in a car crash than non-distracted drivers. On the whole, the attention that a driver puts towards composing his text message is attention that is not fully devoted to the wheel. Second, teens, currently the most active mobile phone users, are the next generation of drivers in America, or the drivers of tomorrow. It's imperative that this future generation does not form or continue any negative habits while sitting behind the wheel of a car, such as texting. Since 2004, the amount of mobile phone usage has climbed steadily among teens aged 12 to 17, to 63% to 63 in fall of 06, and to 71% in early 2008. It is no wonder that the number of teen mobile phone users has flourished over the course of those years. Because, while many teens view having a cell phone as important for practical things, such as getting a ride, or just for safety reasons, of course, they, said they also believe that it says a great deal about them as people. Additionally, younger teens have pointed out that having the newest cell phone is absolutely essential. Inevitably, as the number of teen cell phone users steadily climbs, so does the number of text messages sent per month. According to Nelson PDF, the average U.S. mobile phone teen now sends or receives an average of 2,889 text messages per month. Some of these text messages are bound to be sent behind the wheel of a car. In conclusion, the teens of today are America's future generation of drivers on the road. This being said, banning texting while driving will enforce that this activity is not okay, making for a safer future on the roads. Finally, due to even slower reaction times and less their ability to control a vehicle, those motorists who choose to engage in text messaging while their cars are in motion are considered equally, if not more, impaired than a drunk driver on the road. To explain, in a UK study conducted in 2008 by the Transport Research Laboratory, it was discovered that motorists who texted while driving, reaction times deteriorated by 35%, much worse than those who drank alcohol at the legal limit, who were only 12% slower. 12% versus 35%. This means that even though a driver may be sober, the message that is simply being sent to a friend delays the reaction time significantly more than a driver under the influence of alcohol. Along with delayed reflexes, a study led by the Tra Transport Research Laboratory displayed that text messaging worsened steering control by 91%, and that texters were less likely to maintain safe distances from other cars, as compared to just drunk drivers. On the whole, if driving while under the influence of alcohol is illegal in the U.S., shouldn't an activity that is equally as dominant of the senses be banned too? Every day, innocent lives are jeopardized by other drivers' poor judgment. As the number of cell phone users of driving age builds, indicating at least some occasional texting behind the wheel, chances for safety on the road only lessen. Keeping this in mind, it is ideal that texting on a cellular device while operating a vehicle in motion be banned throughout the whole of the United States of America. By creating one national law to ban this activity throughout the entire nation, Americans can ensure that with all else in their lives, that fellow driver they see texting on the road, putting their own lives at risk, need not be someone to worry about. Further, I feel that every high school in the country should bring an individual into their school who has witnessed results from texting crashes, yearly, to share their results with the students. According to my interviewee, Officer Daniel Monick, an officer with 18 years as a law enforcement officer, he has found that when you explain real life situations, it has a greater impact than reading from a book or a stats manual. Our nation will be safer by taking these effective measures. As students, whether in our freshman or our senior year, we are the future drivers on America's roads. We are the creators of tomorrow. The next time you sit next to a driver engaging in text messaging behind the wheel, whether it be a parent, a sibling, a friend, or even just your neighbor, keep this in mind. Politely ask the driver to wait to look at their text message from Sally until the car is parked, limiting any prospect of danger to them, their passengers, and other drivers on the road.